Um, as you heard, the Premier and Premier, um, with respect, um, good evening, and to my fellow colleagues and all those that are here tonight, good evening. Um, <clears throat> I have what I believe to be an awesome responsibility because we are, I think, the social pulse of the community with regard to measuring uh, the level of service provisioning that is necessary to keep our people uh, a little bit above board relative to their challenges, hardships, and the like. Um, and uh, it is, it is uh, no small feat uh, to uh, do what we do as a government with the budget that we do have because we have some very, very serious challenges socially and socioeconomically, as you would know, particularly in this current economic climate. So the pressure is really on us to not only keep our belts very tight, but to ensure that we don't compromise the quality of the services that we are obligated under our uh, statutes to provide to the citizens of this country. I'm going to focus a little bit more on one area of my responsibility under the remit of the Ministry of Youth, Families and Sports, which is the Department of Child and Family Services. And you're going to be, I think, a bit surprised with some of the things that uh, will be revealed uh, regarding that particular department. But just to give you a, a slight overview of what I have as a responsibility, uh, is the ministry headquarters and out of the ministry headquarters there is some budget allocated of course to the mayor's program and that's under what we call head 71 so when we get into budget you'll hear us debating certain heads which are uh, designated by the opposition uh, because they have the prerogative to decide on what they want to debate during the budget debate the government does not prioritize the debate um, so under Head 71, this ministry headquarters, and as I said, Mirrors has funds allocated from there. Uh, we have a total of 3,703,000 allocated there. We then have youth sport and recreation with a, a, a current uh, amount allocated for this fiscal year of $11,517,000. Child and family services, 17,413,000. Financial assistance, uh, 27,467,000. I'm going to say a little bit about financial assistance as well. And then we have the Human Affairs, under which comes um, the Human Rights Commission, and uh, allocated there is $2,230,000. Um, as I said, we do have mirrors as well. We have the National Sports Center, um, and we are currently uh, in the um, process of completing the aquatic center uh, at a cost of some 18 million dollars for that aquatic center and it's going to be a community centric center uh, that is going to be uh, world class uh, it, which includes a 50 meter Olympic sized pool that will be accredited by um, FINA which is the international uh, body that uh, uh, gives the uh, green light to those kinds of facilities that uh, could facilitate international competition. We will also have uh, a dive platform there. We will be introducing programs such as synchronized swimming and water polo uh, to the wider community which will go just a bit beyond uh, swimming proper. Um, we also will be hosting uh, this year during the Easter week a major event. It is the largest youth athletics track and field competition uh, in the region and that's the Carifta Games. Uh, we have allocated over the last two fiscal years including this year some seven hundred thousand dollars in support of that international event um, and there will be athletes coming from all over the Caribbean region. In fact today I had a meeting with the president uh, Ms. Donna Watson uh, and uh, her team uh, to get an update on the progress of the organi organization of that particular event and they're on time, they're on budget, it's looking very good, it's going to be a showcase event for this island and I'm hoping that every single person in the island will come out uh, not only to uh, be entertained by some of the best youth athletes around the Caribbean region but indeed to support our young athletes who are hard at work preparing to uh, perform at their highest level in this international youth competition. Um, we also uh, 
will um, be looking at uh, making amendments to certain pieces of legislation, particularly uh, uh, with financial assistance where in keeping with the throne speech requirement, I will shortly seek cabinet approval to amend the financial assistance regulations of 2004 so that we can um, revise financial assistance eligibility criteria, particularly for seniors who are homeowners and or who have an interest in real property uh, so that they are not automatically uh, disqualified from receiving um, benefits that they would otherwise qualify for to help them in, in their period of distress or need. Um, there are uh, seniors uh, that uh, may be asset rich but cash poor and uh, with all of the noble and good intent that we had in making amendments in uh, uh, meeting the, the uh, directive of, of budget office uh, we uh, looked at all areas across our ministry where we could cut and be a little bit more efficient and a part of that was, was with the um, resetting of the criteria for financial assistance, particularly for seniors, able-bodied people. And we came to find out through our experience that there were some special hardships. Um, uh, for instance, someone with a physically challenged child who uh, needs transportation to take that child for services or, or care to different places on the island, uh, it, it's very, very challenging to utilize public transportation, as good as our public trans transportation is, in my opinion. And so they were, were disqualified as a result of having more than uh, um, $500 in assets. And as a result of that, we had a look at it, and we had a look at the seniors. And so now we're making the amendments um, so that we can catch these anomalies that we didn't really consider when we made the uh, adjustments. Now I'll go uh, real quickly and on the financial assistance part that's another area where we've done some things that are uh, you know uh, we believe very very uh, responsible in looking to not compromise the allocation of what's required to help people but to make people more accountable. So we've put some strict criteria in place for people that qualify. We have an honesty form, we have where they have to go to labor and training so that they can be assessed and then um, once their skills are assessed, hopefully fit with a uh, 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 conducive uh, employment opportunity. If they are lacking in interviewing skills, we provide interview skills. If they don't have resumes, we do resume building as well. Now. With financial assistance, the interesting statistic is that this year, this coming or the ensuing fiscal year, there will be 700 Bermudians that uh, turn 65 and now uh, become uh, eligible as, as senior citizens for consideration on all levels where there are services and provisioning of supplemental uh, 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 funding for, for them, whatever it might be. And of, of, of that number, we are projecting that there may be about 300 or so that could potentially be new clients added on. So we, we got a challenge. So we have submitted our uh, a budget request, our best w wish list, and we're hoping that um, you know, we will uh, make a strong enough case uh, to substantiate that we deserve to have the allocated funds to provide the provisioning of services that we require because our uh, challenge with the financial assistance uh, in this economic climate is increased as a result of the redundancies, as a result of uh, people losing jobs and that kind of thing. So we've got to be very compassionate but at the same time sensitive and responsible. Um, so that's that area. Now where I want to focus in, in my conclusion is on the Department of Child and Family Services. Um, we have within the Department of Child and Family Services uh, Cross Ministry Intervention Team which is uh, known under the acronym of CMIT. Uh, and the mission is to strengthen our Bermudian community through strengthening families one step at a time. We have this current fiscal year uh, serviced 50 families um, through the CMIT initiative. Uh, 
The CMIT's residential units have been reduced from 10 to 3 due to budgetary constraints, and for the ensuing fiscal year, we'll be looking at that to see if we can uh, get it back to where we think we need it to give the optimum services that we believe are necessary. Um, all CMIT clients are active on caseloads with uh, more than one agency in this community. Thus, their intervention impacts outcomes from multiple agencies. The interventions have been effective with 86% of families serviced, which equates to 43 of the 50 families that we've serviced this current fiscal year. Seven families were terminated um, or withdrew from CMIT services. CMIT um, home-based support uh, supported uh, seven children's transition from residential services into parent and or guardian placements. So we feel very good about that. Three families reduced 100% of their debt during 2011 as a result of the CMIT intervention and commitment to helping families in need in various ways. 21 clients are actively engaged in counseling or psychological interventions. CMIT continues to provide family nurturing parenting groups, money management, intensive home-based support, life skills training, and daily case management services. The high-risk intervention team is the immediate crisis intervention unit of the family treatment system, known as FTS, which provides short-term intervention for youth and their families who are confronted with imminent danger. So we implemented this in 2010. Uh, we provide comprehensive needs assessments and develop uh, individualized intervention plans for those that are identified as clients, clients uh, who meet with high risk criteria are confronted with these challenges. So they include those with suicidal tendencies, homelessness, server substance, uh, severe substance abuse, uh, current violent behaviors, uh, substantiated gang involvement once we are, uh, you know, got the confirmations, uh, acute mental health and severe volatile parent-child relationship challenges. 27 clients have met the high-risk criteria uh, of an, any number of those um, uh, definitions that I gave. Of the 27 clients, 75% have had their risk levels reduced to moderate or stable and are currently being managed by the FTS or the referring agency. Two new referrals are being intensely managed and immediate interventions are being sought as we speak. The most extreme high-risk cases may require the provision of safe houses or overseas uh, treatment, intensive treatment. Um, currently, three have been placed overseas and are included in our psycho-ed statistics. Now, we're looking to get an increase in our psycho-ed allocation for the ensuing year because our projections are such that warrant that consideration. We reduced it by a million dollars last year because upon peeling a few layers, I decided in conjunction with my team in the ministry and the department that we could probably uh, be a little bit more meticulous in our attention to detail in the evaluation process, which involves a team of professionals who uh, assess those that they believe should have overseas interventions. But I came um, into um, uh, experiences where, on my assessment, I thought that the uh, individual clients were well suited to being serviced here in Bermuda with the NGOs or the non-governmental organizations that provide the kind of services that would be successful in intervening um, in various behavioral dysfunctions that were, in my humble opinion, not so uh, severe that would warrant the overseas intervention. Because that cost equates to $14,000 per month per child, up until the time they either graduate or age out, and the age out age is 18 years.